He's worthy to be praised. Yes, he is. Praise him. Praise him. We praise your name, Lord Jesus. I have it on my mind today to give God praise. I pray and trust that that's your testimony today, that you woke up this morning knowing that God gave us his son, and because of his son, we're able to come boldly before the throne of grace and find mercy to help us in our time of need. I pray that you woke up giving God praise today, thanking him for a day that you've never seen before and a day that you'll never see again. That's Anthony Brown and the Fellowship Chorale in the background singing, praise him from the rise of the sun unto the going down of the same. The Lord's name is worthy to be praised. The songwriter said that praise is comely for the upright. John wrote in the book of Revelation that thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power. For thou hast created all things and for thy pleasure they are and they were created. That means you and I were created to give God praise. We were created to give him glory. And I pray that that's what you're doing even now, that you're praising him for all the wonderful things that he has done. Praising him for all the things that you need him to do. Praise him in advance for the things that he's bringing you out of and things that he's taking you to. Praising him for who he is. There's nobody like our God. There's nobody like the son of God, our savior. He's worthy. He's worthy to be praised. I'm going to give us a few more seconds to hear this song. And then at the same time, I, I want you to like, tag, and share this video on Facebook. And then to subscribe to this YouTube page so that you can always get the updates of when our Bible studies are being posted. Get somebody in this virtual class. We're going to talk about praising God today. They're going to need to hear this word. Call his name Jesus. I know we used to call in our spouses and our parents. We used to call in our children, our doctors, our lawyer. But there's one name that you could call to find everything that you need. His name is Jesus. There is no other name under heaven whereby men must be saved. That's the name of Jesus. Woo, something happens when we call him. <laughs> Jesus, every knee will bow one day and every tongue will confess that Jesus is Lord. Jesus for every sickness. Jesus for every disease, for every situation, Jesus, he can handle it. Your grief, Father, right now in the name of Jesus, we thank that we know that you can handle our sickness, you can handle our diseases, you can handle our diseases, you can handle every situation, every challenge, you can handle, Lord God, everything that comes up to try to overthrow um. Uh, our faith in you, Father God, we pray even now, Lord God, that you just help us to keep looking to you, help us to keep looking beyond the hills, knowing that all of our help comes from you, Father. Thank you, Lord God, for letting us know that you've given us a Savior, Father. His name is Jesus. We thank you for Jesus. Thank you for the life that he lived. Thank you, Lord God, for the efficacious death that he died. Thank you, Lord God, that you raised him from the grave on the third day with all power in heaven and earth in his hands. Thank you, Lord God, that he gave us that power. His word says that he has given us power over all the power of the enemy. And for that, God, we say thank you. Thank you, Lord God, that we can speak to things that be not as though they were, Father. And the th dead things in our lives have to come back to life, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, that you've given us resurrect resurrection power, Lord God. We can speak with our tongue, Father. Your word says you have given us the tongue of the learned, Father. You have given us the tongue of the pen of a head, that our tongue is like a pen in the hand of a ready writer, Father. That whatever we speak by faith, that you're ready to write write it down and cause it to come to pass, Father. And so we thank you right now, Lord God, that you're helping us to be bold believers. You're helping us, Lord God, to move from uh, uh, this pusillanimous type of attitude to know that we have power, Lord God, that we can speak with authority, that we can walk in boldness and uh, confidence, knowing, Lord, that if you are for us, you're greater than the whole world against us. We thank you, Lord God, that we can walk with our heads up and our shoulders square, knowing that you are on our side, Father. You told us that you would never leave us nor forsake us, Lord. And so we thank you right now, Father, God, that even with the challenges that we have to deal with, even with the circumstances that we have to face in life, Father, we can do it all from the mindset of being victorious in you. Help us, Lord God, to know that we're still victorious no matter what comes up against us. We have the victory through Christ Jesus, Father. You said in your word, we who have faith are overcomers because our faith is our victory. And so we thank you for that right now. So we don't pray pitiful prayers. We don't pray pitiful 
pitiful prayers. We pray, we pray prayers of praise to you, knowing that you hear us, knowing that you already have a, a will for us that is good and not evil, knowing that your promises for us are already yes and amen. And so we thank you, Lord God, that we can make our petitions, our requests known to you. And even with praise, thank you in advance for what you're going to do. Even your no's are good for us, Lord. We thank you for your no's. We thank you for your yeses. We thank you for your ways. We just thank you, Lord God, that when you're with us and because you're with us, we have everything we need, Father God. And so we pray even now in the name of Jesus that you would teach us how to lean and depend upon you, that we would not look to the uh, look to horses or chariots or look to strong men, that we would put our faith and our confidence in you. We love you. We thank you. We pray this prayer by faith. We pray this prayer in victory. We pray this prayer in praise to you, the only true and living God, our Lord and our Savior. It's in your name we pray. In the name of Jesus, amen. And thank God. God bless you, my brothers and sisters. I got kind of caught up in the prayer. I didn't know what I was saying, but when we just think about who God is and how great God is, there is no way we could think about how good God is and cry and complain at the same time. God is good to us. And so I pray that we are taking on that mindset every day to live in victory, to live with this winning attitude, knowing that because we're the children of God, because we're, because we're the sons and daughters of God, that we win no matter what. We win. We are winners. God has given us the victory through Christ Jesus. And so um, I pray that that's going to be the attitude that you have all the rest of this year here we are on this is february the 17th i think it is 17th or 18th whatever day it is uh so we, we're almost two whole months into this year and so there are so many things that we've already experienced this year and uh, some of those things are no different than some of the things we experienced last year. But the good news of the gospel is we also have the same God, that there is a shadow of turning in our God. He is the same God. He has power today to do exactly what you need him to do. He's the same God today as he was when Jesus walked the earth. God is God. Amen, somebody. And because he's God and because we're his children, we, we've got to learn to praise him anyhow. No matter what you're facing, no matter what you're under, no matter what you're dealing with, praise God anyhow. Amen, somebody. Praise him, praise him, praise him. So again, my name is Yolanda Burroughs. I'm the Minister of Christian Education here at the Fountain of Praise Church, and I'm the one o'clock teacher on Wednesdays. And so I'm just uh, excited about this word today. We know that this year, our 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 focus this year is on better things. That's our focus this year, better things, our thematic focus, better things. And our folks say uh, is um, praise, ways, sacrifice, and service that we're giving God better praise this year, better service this year, better ways this year, and better sacrifice this year. Did I, did I say that right? I don't think I said it right. It's better praise, better ways, better sacrifice, and better service. So we look at those four areas, giving God a better praise, giving God better um, ways, and we're working on being better believers, better people, better men, better women, uh, and then we uh, better sacrifice and better service. And we, we want to give God better because every day he gives us his best, amen. And our key verse this year is, it is better to put our confidence in God and not in man. It is better to put your confidence in God and not in man. Where is my hand out? I am not starting this video over. It is better to put your confidence in God and not man. That is our key verse. And then our motto for this year is, I will be better I will be a better witness at home and beyond and share with others the great things the Lord has done. I will be a better witness at home and beyond and share with others the great things Jesus has done. And so that's our motto for this year, our theme for this year, our scripture for this year. And so today our lesson is better praise. Somebody write that. Somebody write that in the comment section. Better praise. Better praise. We want to give God better praise. We want to, uh, we want to take it up. If you, if you had a mediocre level of praise last year, last week, or this morning, we want to take it up. We want to raise the praise. We want to, we want to give God better praise that we don't wait for some good thing to happen or wait for some new thing to happen that, but that we find, um, 
within ourselves to give God praise. The Bible says uh, God wants us to give him praise uh, in everything because that's the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning us. The will of God is that we give him praise in everything. Why? Because our God is omniscient. God knows everything. And so if he allows us to uh, experience something, you know, he understands what he's allowing and he knows why he's allowing it. And so even though we may not know because we trust him, that we got to learn how to praise him even in those situations that we don't understand. Why? Because our God knows. The Bible says, Isaiah said, his ways are not our ways. His thoughts are not our thoughts as high as the heavens are above the earth. And as far as the east is from the west, so are his ways from our ways. His thoughts are from our thoughts. So we don't have to understand it all. I say this all the time. If we understood all of God's ways and he couldn't be God. God's got ways that, that are beyond our comprehension. Amen, somebody. He wants us to know him and in the power of his resurrection, the fellowship of his suffering. But listen, we can never fully know him, not until he appears. Why? Because God is, he's so much bigger than us. He's transcendent. He's a mysterion tremendum. God is, he's a mystery reveal who's still a mystery. There's so much about God that we have learned. There's so much about God I have learned in my 52 years of life, but there's so much more that I have to learn. Amen, somebody. John said, my favorite verses in the whole Bible, 1 John, John said, behold, what man of love the Father has bestowed upon us, that we should be called the sons of God. It does not yet appear where we shall be, but we know that when he shall appear, we shall be just like him, for we shall see him as he is. Right now, we're striving to be like him. Right now, we're, we're walking in obedience so we can be more like the Son. Right now, the Holy Spirit is living within us, sanctifying us daily with his word to conform us into the image of Christ Jesus. But as long as we're in this world, we're going to deal with some flesh, some temptations. As long as we're in this world, we are still, you know, you know, short of his glory. But when he shall appear instantly, we're going to be changed to look just like him. Amen. So, so there's so much more to God that we don't see, that we don't know. But what we do know, we ought to give him praise for. And what we don't know, we ought to give him praise for. We ought to just give God praise. And so our key today, we talked about better praise, better praise, better praise. I'm going to give you about six definitions, different definitions of the word praise, because we know the Greek and Hebrew Bible, um, uh, there are many, many different uh, definitions. And so I want to give us, uh, I think it's about eight definitions that I'm going to share with you today. Uh, so when we talk about praise, whenever you see the word praise in the Bible, don't just assume that the word praise in one scripture means the same thing in the very next verse. It's important that we do word study, etym etymology, that we look at the history of the word, break down uh, the meaning of the word so that we can understand fully what God is saying to us about that word. And so today when we, uh, we're going to look at about eight definitions of the of praise praise, eight different words for praise. And so, but the key purpose today for this lesson is to show the mighty acts of the Lord to prove he is worthy to be praised. Not that God has to prove anything to us. Um, Paul says to the church in, at, at, at Rome, the first chapter of Rome, he says, God has revealed himself even through nature, through just nature reveals the splendor of God. Nature reveals the greatness of God. The psalmist talks about uh, uh, the greatness of God, the grandeur of God. When we look around, we see how he is, uh, he scooped out the valley, how he formed the mountains, how he paint the, painted the sky. Amen. So we just look around us, we, we behold the, the wondrous works of our God. And for that, we ought to praise him. We ought to just praise when we just look around. Take time just to take time just to see, look at nature, just and and see and see God's handiwork. That alone ought to give you enough to praise God for. And so that's what we're going to look, look today uh, to see how worthy He is of our praise. That not that He's just asking for praise. You know, uh, it is when we generalize about women, we say women love to be praised. Tell me my hair look cute, or tell me this is nice lipstick, or tell me you know I have the right. You know, we we like praise, and and generally we do stuff so that we can receive praise. But the truth about the truth of the matter is God doesn't have to do anything to be praised. He is praised. God God is praised. Amen, somebody. So nobody can do what God has done. Nobody can compete with him. Nobody is equal to him. So God, God doesn't have to do anything else to receive our praise. He's already done more than enough. He's already done more than enough for us to give him praise. And so I don't want to get preaching. I, I think I'm getting preaching. I don't mean to. So, so, so that's our key purpose for this lesson today is to show the mighty acts of the Lord to prove he is worthy to be praised. And so the study is coming from Psalm number 111. 
Psalm number 111. This is a, 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 a hymn of praise to God. We know that there are different types of psalm, penitential psalm, imprecatory psalms, psalms of thanksgiving, psalms of praise, song, songs of ascent, or songs of uh, 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 whether people sang on their way up to worship, right? The songs of ascent or songs of degree. There's uh, songs of um, wisdom psalms. So there are many types of psalms. This particular psalm is a, is a praise psalm. And it's actually an acrostic, a Hebrew poetry with 22 lines that they were call an acrostic. And I'm not going to get into all of that. We're going to just uh, look at these uh, 10 verses so we can see what God has done um, um, in, in his care for us. And, and hopefully in these 10 verses, we'll find more reasons for which we can give God praise. I'm going to read these 10 verses and prayerfully I'll be able to teach all 10 verses today. So Psalm number 111 says, praise the Lord. I will praise the Lord with my whole heart in the assembly of the upright and in the congregation. The works of the Lord are great, studied by all who have pleasure in them. His work is honorable and glorious and his righteousness endures forever. He has made his wonderful works to be remembered. The Lord is gracious and full of compassion. He has given food to those who fear him. He will ever be mindful of his covenant. He has declared to his people the power of his works in giving them the heritage of the nations. The works of, the, the works of his hands are verity and justice. All his precepts are sure. They stand fast forever and ever and are done in truth and righteousness. He has sent redemption to his people he has commanded his covenant forever. Holy and awesome is his name. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. A good understanding have all those who do his commandments. His praise endures forever. I can tell you now I'm not going to be able to teach all 10 verses, but we'll take a stab at it. So, so here in this, 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 this psalm, we see we see the word pr praise is uh uh the, the very first word the, the psalmist says he says praise the lord so uh, let me give you these these definitions of the word praise these different words for praise in the hebrew and the greek i want you to write these down and so um remember that whenever you read the word praise in the scripture it's not necessarily suggesting that we do the same thing okay pray praise is a word that, that 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 means to act to do something toward God and not every time you see the word praise is it suggested that we do the same thing so I'm, I'm going to give you all these definitions at one time so one definition of praise one word for praise uh uh is yada yada y-a-d-a-h yada and that word praise means to use the hands to hold out the hands to you, yada, yada, God, to, to use the hands, to hold out the hands. And so when we praise God, we want to lift up holy hands in the sanctuary, right? That's the word of God says. We want to uh, wave our hands. We want to uh, ex uh, show our gratitude and our praise to God with our hands. There's a, uh, we can see that in Psalm 7, verse 17, Psalm 7 and 17, because if we're going to give God a greater praise, it's important that we understand just how to do that. Because praise is not only singing, praise is not just um, reading scripture. There's so many different uh, actions that praise uh, dictates for us to do. And so Psalm 7, Psalm 7, verse 7 says, Psalm 7 and 7 says, so the congregation of the peoples shall surround you for their sakes, therefore return on high. Psalm 7 and 17, I'm sorry, 7 and 17, I read the wrong verse. Psalm 7 and 17 says, I will praise the Lord according to his righteousness. Listen, I will praise the Lord according to his righteousness. And so that word praise in Psalm 7 and 17 is, is, is really saying, I will lift up my hands to the Lord according to his righteousness. You get that? So when you when you acknowledge what righteous things God has done, it, it should make you want to throw up your hands. That's a form of praise. I'm lifting my hands to the Lord because of his righteousness. Woo. Then, then um, the, the, the other word, another word for praise is halil, halil, 
H-I-L-L-U-W-L, Halil. It means a celebration. Thanksgiving for harvest. I like this. Halil, H-I-L-L-U-W-L. It means a celebration. Thanksgiving for harvest. Who was that used to sing the song? Uh, sang the song, celebrate good times. Come on. So let's let's turn to Leviticus 19 and 24. We're gonna keep our Bibles open, okay? This is Bible, so keep your Bibles open. So Leviticus 19 and 24, the word praise in Leviticus 19 and 24 would mean to celebrate God for the harvest, that you're thanking him and that you're celebrating the harvest. What is the harvest? That's that's when we have uh, 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 we, ha we, we have reaped from reaped something from the Lord. We've we received some blessings from the Lord, some food, so, some, some provision from the Lord. When we look at the providential care of God, it should make you want to celebrate. Uh, so Leviticus 19 and 24. Leviticus 19 and 24. Leviticus 19 and 24 says, but in the fourth year, all its fruit shall be holy, a praise to the Lord. Listen, in the fourth year, all its fruit shall be holy, a praise to the Lord. And so when Moses wrote that in Leviticus, what he was saying to the people is that in the fourth year, everything that you gather in the fourth year, that belongs to the Lord. Give that to the Lord as a thanksgiving for the harvest. So that praise here, he said, thank God for the harvest. Amen, somebody. Thank God for the harvest. Whenever we, uh, Paul said uh, to the church, um, uh, to, uh, in one of his epistles, Paul said, one, uh, I'm sorry, one plants, another waters, and God gives the increase. So, so uh, Paul planted, Apollos watered, and God gives the increase. So, so what Paul wants us to understand in the epistle is that uh, the harvest and increase comes from the Lord. The, 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 the word of God says promotion doesn't come from the east, it doesn't come from the west, promotion comes from God. And so God promotes, God, God blesses, God extends, God expands, God prospers. And when God does that, we should celebrate what the Lord has done by praising him, praising him for the harvest. In other words, when, when, when God gives you uh, increase, allows you to work on a job and you get a check. When you get that check, don't think that's your check. Give God praise because God gave you the strength. He gave you the job. He allowed you to work there. Come on, y'all. And so when you get the check, understand it is it, God. Praise God for what you have, what, what he's allowed you to do for the harvest. Give God praise. Then Deuteronomy chapter 10, verse 21. Deuteronomy chapter 10, verse 21. As soon as I start recording, some of my devices want to stop. And that, that's distracted for me, distracted to me. So let me take that one down. So Deuteronomy chapter 10, verse 21. This is another, another, another word for praise is Tehila. Tehila. T, not tequila, Tehila. T-E-H-I-L-L-A-H. T-E-H-I-L-L-A-H. That word praise, Tehila, is another, another word for praise. It means a hymn a laudation. And we're going to see that in Deuteronomy chapter 10, verse 21. Deuteronomy chapter 10, verse 21. Deuteronomy 10 and 21. So we see this word praise in Deuteronomy 10 and 21. It's not going to mean celebrate for the harvest. It's not going to mean to hold out the hands. Let's see. It's going to mean a hymn. So 10 and 21 says, he is your praise and he is your God who has done for you these great and awesome things which your eyes have seen. Listen, he is your praise. He is your him. God is your him. If I say him, listen, we just, yeah, we, some of y'all just celebrated Valentine's Day a few days ago. I didn't because I didn't have a, I don't have a bay or a boo, uh, but I can celebrate because he is my him. He is my H-I-M, but he's also my H-Y-M-N. Somebody say he's the him. He's my him. So the word praise also means a him. What is a him, y'all? Come on, season saints. What is a him? When we start talking about those old hymns, those old 100s, what's a him? Huh? 
a hymn is a is it's a religious song or poem that we sing to God. So so what the psalmist is really saying, not not what the psalmist is saying, what that word psalm means in the book of Deuteronomy is saying to sing or to or to speak a poem to God. So God is my song. Listen, you don't have so Derek Collins sings a song when the music stops. That's when I sing my song when the band goes home. Come on, y'all. We, we got to have a song beyond the walls of the church. We got to have a song in our heart when the praise team is, has shut off the mic. You have to have a song in your heart. The Bible says that he is my hymn. He is my song. Have you ever just thought about God and just start singing, making up words or making melody in your heart because he is your hymn? We give God, we give God praise in our heart. We sing songs to him. Amen, somebody. He, he is the song that I sing. Listen, rose or red, violets or blue, Lord, I love you. <laughs> he, he's, he's, he's a song. He's a poem. That's, that's what that word to healer means, to sing a hymn to God. That praise to praise. So, so, so that there are different types of praise, different genres of praise, different words for praise, if you will. And so Deuteronomy, what Moses is saying to the people in Deuteronomy, he's saying that sing a hymn to God, sing a song to God because he is great and because he is awesome. Sing a song to God for the things that you have seen with your own eyes. Listen, there's some things I could praise God for that you can't praise God for. You haven't seen everything the Lord has done in my life. And so when I'm singing, I'm singing because of what I witnessed with what because of what I witnessed with my own eyes. What have you witnessed with your own eyes? What have you seen God do for you that nobody else has seen? Come on, y'all. You have some private victories that nobody else knows about. And because of those private victories, you ought to be willing to give God a praise publicly. There's some midnight hours that you stayed awake. And if it were not for the Lord, you would have, come on, y'all, you would have fallen into a deep place of depression. But because God was right there with you, he helped you to take off the spirit of heaviness. He helped you take off the those garments of heaviness and put on the garments of praise. Nobody did that but God. Come on, now, somebody walked out on you, but God was right there with you all the time, telling you, I will never leave you nor forsake you. There are some things that you have seen in your own life that will cause you to give God praise publicly. Whew. When I think of the goodness of Jesus and all that he's done for me, my soul cries out, hallelujah. Somebody say hallelujah. Think, come on, come on, come on now, come on now, come on now. Think about it, think about it. What have you seen the Lord do? Have you seen him raise up somebody sick? Have you seen him save somebody who was lost? Have you seen him put food on your table? Have you seen him, come on, I put, come, woo. what have you seen the Lord do? If you've seen him do something, you ought to sing a song, write a poem to him. Amen, somebody, amen, somebody. So, 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 so we already have three different definitions, three different words for praise. Praise means uh, yada. It means to hold out the hands or to use your hands to, for God, to, to, to lift your hands, to, to hold out your hands. Uh, uh, he, he, uh, to heal up. To heal means a hymn or to sing a, 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 a song to God or a poem to God for what he's done. And then uh, Halil H-I-L-L-U-W-L, -L -L, that, that Hebrew word means a celebration for thanks for the harvest. So I'm thanking God for the harvest. Woo. Let me give you another one. So let's turn to Psalm 104 and 35. I hope I'm not going too fast. Psalm 104, verse 35. This, this when we see praise in this one, and this psalm is going to mean halal. H-A-L-A-L, H-A-L-A-L, -L, halal. That word halal, Psalm 104 and 35. Psalm 104 and 35. Psalm 104 and verse 35. This is a psalm of creation. Verse 35 says, may sinners be consumed from the earth and the wicked be no more. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. Praise the Lord. Listen, Psalm 104, verse 35 again. May sinners be consumed from the earth. Y'all miss this. I tell you all the time, when there's trouble in the world because we are in the world and not of the world, don't you, don't, don't you start crying because the world is crying. Don't you start uh, fearing and fretting because the world is fearing and fretting. God is removing sinners from the earth. Amen, somebody. The wicked, whew, 
Their plight is not our plight. Their plight may very well be our praise. God will take a pitiful plight for them and make it a praise for you. God, God will take Oh, Lord, Lord, I don't want to go there. I don't want to go there. I, I don't want to go there. God will take the wealth of the wicked and lay it up for the righteous. God will take what is for their demise, come on out and, and make it give life to you, make it be life for you. Amen, somebody. Look, so may sinners be consumed from the earth and the wicked be no more. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. Praise the Lord. So the psalmist is saying, Lord, take the sinners away. Uh, deal with the wicked, Lord. But uh, bless my soul. I'm blessing you, Lord. I'm praising you, Lord. So that word praise here, halal, that word means to be clear. It means to shine. It means to boast. So halal, the word praise, that, that word in Psalm 105 is halal. It means to be clear, to shine, to boast. What I love about the Lord calls us the children of the light. And so uh, we used to sing a song back uh, back in the day, walk in the light, beautiful light, round where the dew drops of mercy shine bright, shine all around us by day and by night. Jesus is the light of the world because we're the children of God, because we're the children of the light. Even when the world is at its darkest, we can have joy. We can praise God because he shows us the path. Wasn't that our key word last year? That word is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our pathway. Whether we're sitting down or moving forward, God will be light for us. He will, he will cause things to be clear for us. He will cause things to shine for us shine all around us by day and by night. Jesus is the light of the world. And so praise also means hello. It means to shine. It means to boast. It means to be clear. Come on, y'all. That's why when you're experiencing trouble and calamity and sickness and dearth and pain and devastation in your life, that is prime time for you to give God praise. That is the perfect opportunity for you to shine the light on God. That is the perfect opportunity for you to lift up your voice and let everybody around you know that God is the God. Oh, come on, y'all. God is, is the God of your life. That he's, 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 he's your shepherd and that you shall have no want. That he is the one who provides for you. He's the one who make ways for you is doing the darkest of your life that you got to praise God the loudest so that the sinner can see that you don't put your trust in horses you don't put your trust in strong men you don't put your trust in this government you don't put your trust in yourself that you put your trust in God that even when you experience trying times you still trust in God that even when you can't track him or trace him you can still trust him and your praise will help somebody to know that Woo, tell somebody my praise is real my praise is real. Even when I have tears in my eyes at the same time, I'm thanking God, amen, that, all, that I know all of my tears are being bottled up, that God keeps count of every tear that I cry. Come on, y'all. Come on, y'all. And he's going to turn my tears of sorrow into tears of joy. He's going to turn my mourning into dancing. And so we got to be clear. We got to, we, we, we can't, we got to stop being closet Christians. Stop praising the prophecy of your own home. Stop praising in your own car. You got to learn how to break out in the praise of the H-E-B. You had just enough money to pay, to pay for those groceries. Then you ought to give God a tequila right there. Thank God for the harvest. Thank God that you had just enough. You ought to break out in the praise. You ought to give God a halal. Be clear. God did it. Praise God. No matter where you are, give God a praise. Don't be ashamed to praise his name. Praise him from the rise of the sun until the going down of the same. His name is worthy to be praised. So we're going to yada him with our hands. We're going to hallel him with a celebration for his harvest. We're going to tehillah him. We're going to thank him with a hymn and with song, with songs and, uh, and poems. We're going to write of him. Come on, you, you write your lovers, your husband, your spouses, your bae, your boo, your children. Come on, your, your secret partners, your pen pals, your prison pals. You write everybody else a letter, a love note. Why don't you write a love note to God? Open up your journal. Just say, Lord, I thank you today. I love you today. I can't even thank you enough. So I just want to put on this paper, I love you. X O X O X. I'll write the Lord a love note. Amen. So don't just write prayer requests, write some praise reports. Tell the Lord, thank you on pen and paper. Text, just text, just text the Lord, Lord, I love you. <laughs> Amen, somebody. So that's what the, that's what the word that's what the word uh, a tahila means. It means to sing a hymn, and a hymn is a song and it's a poem that we give to God. And halal means to be clear, to shine, to boast about God. Boast about God. Boast about God. 
Don't just brag about what gifts somebody about you or brag about how well you're doing. Boast about the goodness of the Lord. Because if it had not been the Lord who was on your side, if it had not been the Lord who made a way, if it had not been a, the Lord who opened that door, come on, y'all, praise belongs to God. Then this, this next word is toda. Toda. Everybody say toda. All right, toda. T O W D A H. Toda. 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 That's another. That's a Hebrew. Another Hebrew word for the word praise, and it means an extension of the hands. It means to extend the hands. It means to make confession. The word toda means to make a sacrifice. Look. So Psalm forty-two and four. Psalm 42 and 4, Psalm 42 and 4. When we read Psalm 42 and 4, when we see the word Psalm there, I praise that we're not going to automatically assume that it means to lift the hands or it's, it does automatically assume that it means to be clear. We're not going to automatically assume that it means to celebrate for the harvest. Uh, this praise in Psalm 42 and 4, it means an extension of the hands. It means to make confession. It means to sacrifice. So Psalm 42 and 4. Psalm 42 and 4 says, when I remember these things, I pour out my soul within me. For I used to go with the multitude. I went with them to the house of God with the voice of joy and praise with a multitude that kept a pilgrim feast. So and th this psalm is talking about, this, this psalm uh, 42 is talking about seeking the Lord with your whole heart like a deer pant panting after God. Uh, a, a, a panting after the water brooks that my soul is panting after God. My, my soul is thirsty for God. About four or five years ago, I think the colloquialism on the street, the colloquialism the young adults were saying was she thirsty or he thirsty as somebody who wanted a, a spouse or a partner really bad. So that person was called thirsty. So, but this song is talking about my, my soul is thirsty for God. Yeah, yeah, I want a companion. Yes, I want a husband. Yes, I want a mate. Yes, I want this. But more than anything else, my heart is thirsting after God. My heart is 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 is, is longing after God. So so the praise here is saying it's 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 extending it's it's extending the hands toward God. You know, it's like a baby where a baby wants the mom or daddy to pick her up or pick him up. They they extend their hands, extend their hands, and so that that's what this word "toda" means. It means to extend the hands. It means I'm making a confession, Lord. I can't do this by myself, Lord. I don't I don't like being down here by myself, Lord. I confess to you, I can't make it by myself, and so I told all you. Woo! Somebody said I need to told all him that you extend the hands to God. Woo! I don't just I don't just hold out my hands in, in yada. I don't just bow down and yada uh, uh, and hold out my hands in yada. But I to heal him. I lift up my hands to let him know, Lord, I need you to pick me up. I need you to carry me. I need you to be right here with me. I'm thirsty for you. I'm hungry for you. I'm longing after you. I need you. I can't make it without you. Somebody say, praise him. Praise him. See, the devil wants us to cry and, and, to, and to feel sorry for ourselves. But I promise you, if we read the word of God, even in our most pitiful plight, we can still give God praise because the word praise told our means to say to the Lord, to confess to the Lord, I need you. I'm extending my hands. So when you feel lonesome, can I tell you what I know in those times when you feel lonesome, all you have to do is find a quiet spot and say, Lord, I need to feel you. Lord, I need a touch from you. Lord, I need your embrace. I know I'm, I've got to be socially distant from other people, but Lord, I need to feel you close to me. I need to know that you're with me, Lord. I'm praising you, God, because I know you said that if I draw nigh to you, you are drawing nigh to me. So I'm lifting my hands. I'm extending my hands. You, Lord, come near to me. Woo. The Bible says, the Bible says, when praise, I don't think the Bible didn't say that. We say that when praises go up, blessings come down. That's what we say. When praises go up, blessings come down. The Bible says God inhabits the praises of his people. So if you need the Lord to come down in your situation, lift up your hands to give him praise because the word says he will inhabit. He will come live in your praise. Come on, y'all. Lift up your hands, oh ye gates. Even be lifted up your everlasting doors and the king of glory shall come in. Who is this king of glory? 
glory. The Lord God, strong and mighty. The Lord mighty in battle. He is the king of glory. Come on, told our God, Lord, I need you to come down. Down into my home, I'm here alone. Down into my heart, I feel sad. Down into my pocketbook, I'm broke. Lord, I need you to come down. So I told all you, I lift up my hands. Come, come down, Holy Spirit. Come thou. We don't need to say come down necessarily because he's already within us. But Toda is a way of showing him that I'm surrendering, showing him that I need him. I'm not trying to aggrandize myself. I'm not trying to pull my own self up by my own boost straps. I'm not trying to be more than I am. I recognize I am nothing without you, Lord. I need you. I praise you. You are the only one who's greater than me, the only one higher than me. Everybody else is on the same level, but you are the only one who is high and lifted up. You are the only one who's strained, will feel the tip, but everybody else is unclean. Everybody else has unclean lips, Lord. You are the only high and lifted up one. And we look to you, Lord. We want you to come down. Somebody say, come down, Lord. Come on down. Rain down on us, Lord. So we, we told all it means to extend the hands that I'm making a confession and giving sacrifice. Amen, somebody. So this other way, I'm going to give you four more words. Is that okay? Four more words. We've been on 40 minutes. We have some time. We didn't have class last week, so you have some time. So another word for praise in, in, in Hebrew is zamar. Zamar, Z-A-M-A-R. And if I mispronounce this, forgive me. It's a Hebrew word, Zamar. And that word means a striking with the fingers to play string instruments. So we can praise God on instruments. Psalm 52. We know that's what the 150th number of Psalm tells us to do, right? But let's read Psalm 57 and 7. Psalm 57 and 7. When we read the word praise in Psalm number 52 and 7, that word praise won't mean to hold out the hands. It won't mean to be clear, to shine, to boast. It won't mean a hymn. It won't mean to extend the hands or to confess. When we read the word praise in Psalm 57 and 7, it's going to mean to play string instruments. It's going to mean striking of the fingers. Psalm 57 and 7 says, my heart is steadfast oh god my heart is steadfast i will sing and give praise awake my glory listen to this so this is this is a psalmist singing uh singing that he's going to uh praise god with his fingers we know david was th this is a psalm of david uh, when David was running away from Saul, he wrote this psalm. And so re remember when David was on the run from Saul, sometimes he was hiding in the, the cage of the cave in caves in the cave Agilum. Sometimes he was, uh, you know, in some obscure place. He was no, was not in the tabernacle, was not in the sanctuary, was not at the church. Uh, and so he, he, he had to remember what he would do when he was in the sanctuary. He had to remember, he had to recall to his mind what he would do when he was in church. Come on, y'all. We have been out of the doors of the church almost one whole year now. And so we don't have many of, most of us, I would say, don't have somebody in our house playing the keyboard, somebody with the organ. We, we don't have you know uh, all of the instruments that we have when we come into the, the the house of the lord but at home so so we see when david was on the run from saul david was saying my heart is steadfast in other words i'm not going anywhere i, I still believe what i i still believe what i believe i'm still confident in you god my heart is still sure i'm still locked in i'm still connected to you i'm still loyal and faithful to you that's what david is saying he says i will sing and give praise he said, I will sing and give praise. So, so in his mind, what he's saying is, Lord, I'm still praising. Remember, David played the harp. David was a, a wonderful musician. He was, he uh he had many, he had he was a poet, he had many skills and giftings, but when he was on the run from Saul, he did not have the, the instruments with him. But in his heart, he remembered. So I'm trying to I'm, I'm trying to tell you that sometimes we want to think praise is only tangible, that you got to, it, it's got to be something that you can feel. But sometimes praise is, is the meditation of your heart that you recall to your mind the good things that the Lord has done and you and you sing a melody in your heart to God. You're playing, you, you're allowing God to hear the strings of your heart playing. So the Psalm 57 and 7, that word song, praise there means to play with the string instruments. David didn't have the string instrument when he was on the run from Saul. But what he was saying to God is, Lord, he says, I, I, everything that I have, I'm still giving to you. All of my gifts, talents, and abilities, whether I could do them now, whether I have access to those instruments now, you have my heart. 
Come on, y'all. I know plenty of people who have gifts, talents, and abilities, but they don't even they don't they don't exercise those gifts with heart. They don't do it with passion. I mean, they just they just kind of sing. They don't sing with passion. They don't sing with the anointing. They just play. But David has said, "From my heart, God, I'm playing." I'm trying to tell you, when you get your heart and your head together, when you get your heart, your head, and your hand together, then we can really give God the praise that he deserves. So David is saying, I don't have my string instruments out here. I don't have my harp out here. But Lord, the, the same heart that I use when I'm playing that harp is what I'm giving to you right now. I'm giving you praise from my heart with string instruments. You have the, you have the strings of my heart, God. <laughs> Come on, y'all. Y'all, y'all. Have you ever been in love? Oh Lord, why would I bring that up? Have you ever, my my great nephew, my my nieces and my nephews, they 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 have the strings in my heart. My niece, my niece just called, my niece just called to tell me that um the lights were going on and off. It's raining, the lights are going on and off. And so Carson's in the background saying, Yeah, Mia, and it's really cold outside. The lights going off, and then they're coming back on, then they're going off again. And so then Carly said, Yeah, Mia, so what you gonna do now? So she asked me, what was I going to do now? Like, I can make that lights come back on. So but so when somebody have the strings of your heart, you'll do whatever. You know, I'm thinking maybe I should just get in my car and run over there and pick them up and let them come in my house because my lights are not flickering on and off. They live about 15 minutes from me. So so when somebody have the string, strings of your heart, they can get you to do whatever they want you to do. Listen, God wants the string of your heart. Give God the strings of your heart so whatever God wants you to do, you will do it. If he pulls you to the right, you will go right. When he pulls you to the left, you will go left. If he pulls you back two feet, you will go back two feet. If he pulls you far, wherever God pulls you, you're willing to go say, Lord, take the strings in my heart. I'm giving you the strings in my heart. I'm praising you. Amen, somebody. Are we almost there? Are y'all getting it? So we have the Yada, the Halil, the Tahila, the Halal, the Todar praise. We have the Zamar praise. Then that we have the Epanos praise. E P A I N O S. Epanos. May not be pronouncing the right. That's okay. I'm not Hebrew. Neither are you. E P A I N O S. Epanos. That word. That word praise. Epanos. It means to applaud. It means to commend. That is actually a Greek word for praise. Uh, so when we turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 5, and, and what you'll discover about the New Testament, you don't see a lot of, you don't see instruments necessarily uh, in, in the New Testament. You, we do see them in, in the book of Revelation. But, um, and so we don't, you don't see a whole lot of words or praise in the New Testament. But let's, let's, let's look at 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 5. 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 5. That's what the Church of Christ, uh, is that the Church of Christ don't use instruments in their church because they don't see instruments used in the New Testament. So 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 5. And we know this, this whole book is for us, right? So we, there's, enough, there's enough instruments in the book of Psalms to let us know that it's all do God, right? Even in the book of Revelation, whatever we can use to give God praise is what he wants us to do. If you tap dancing, amen, somebody. First Corinthians chapter four, verse five says, for I know of nothing against myself, for I know of nothing against myself, yet I am not justified by this, but he who judges me is the Lord. First Corinthians chapter four, verse five, therefore judge nothing before the time until the Lord comes who will both bring to light the hidden things of darkness and reveal the counsels of the hearts. Then each one's praise will come from God. Let me read that again because I read verse four and five. Let me just read verse five again. Therefore, judge nothing before the time until the Lord comes, who will both bring to light the hidden things of darkness and reveal the counsels of the hearts. Then each one's praise will come from God. Woo, it's so much right there. But that word, well, that, what Paul is really saying to this church at Corinth, he says, stop, and, and you know, the church at Corinth was a, a church that had many gifts, but they were very immature. They were very carnal. They were, they were competitive. They were very sinful. They were very fleshy. They were not spiritual people at all. They had a lot of gifts. They had a lot of talents. They had a lot of abilities. It was a new church, but they were all over the place. They, they, they were big headed because they had gifts. They were carnal and 
and they lived according to the lust of their flesh. And so they, they it was easy for them to judge. They say, oh, well, she, she good because she could sing or he good because he could preach or, you know, they were judging based on the flesh, based upon what they could see. And Paul said, listen, be careful. Don't you judge anything because only God knows the heart. And so when God comes, he's going to reveal what's in the heart. I, and I am saying heart, H-E-A-R-T, and not harp. So he's going to, he's, so praise will come from God because only God can rightly judge, righteously judge, because God's judgments are pure. He doesn't look at just what people see on the outside. God judges the heart. So it says that then when he comes, one's praise will come from God. Don't you be the person that want to praise your own self, ring your own bell, toot your own horn, stroke your own ego. Come on now, try to get people to follow you and come on now, be on your team, hashtag me all day. Listen, you better understand that it is God who is able to judge us righteously and only his judgments are true because he knows what is in the heart. He knows what is in the mind of the spirit. So some of us, we judge based upon the, the, the flesh and what we know, and we couldn't be further from the truth. But Paul says, when, when he says praise, he says, then once praise will come from God. That word praise, he says, God's going to commend them. God's going to applaud them. I like that. So praise, this word praise, eponos, in Greek, eponos, it actually means to commend. It means to applaud. You should live your life in such a way that God is praising you. Y'all get y'all don't y'all don't get that. That's why the Bible tells us to walk circumspectly before men. I know we like to say, I don't care what they say. I'm my own woman. I'm my own man. I don't care. Let them judge me. Well, the Bible says you should walk circumspectly before everybody. You should care what people think because we're witness for Christ. And all we have is our witness. All we have is our reputation. All we have is, you know, what we can show people, right? But the Bible says we should live in such a way that God will commend us, that God will applaud us, that God will say, well done, my good and faithful servant. You have been faithful over a few things. Come on up and I'll make you rule over many. God wants to applaud us. Paul says God wants to applaud us. He wants to commend us. He's looking at our heart. He's not just looking at how much money you give out of your hand. He's looking at how if you gave it grudgingly. He's looking at if you were trying to be braggadocious. He's looking at if you would come on out trying to one up somebody. God is not just looking at what you're doing on the outside. He's judging the heart motives what were you trying to get out of it was it to praise god or was it to praise self i'll never forget a few years ago my sister and i and my nieces we are uh you know from time to time we make gift bags and just do stuff to give to the homeless people and so one christmas we we, we made all these christmas bags uh with, with non-perishable food i was a, just a little gift that we were just going uh we were all around you know all around our neighborhood passing out these bags and so um i think that's when we first really started getting on facebook live so we were videoing people and we were just happy i get out and my sister go run to them and hug the people and give them the christmas gift that we gave and so we were posting on facebook you know, we were just posting just enjoying christmas day and enjoying being a blessing to other people we didn't think anything of it and so later that day i was looking at the facebook post and so somebody coming a guy I don't even remember his name he said uh why do you why do you do that? He said, why do you why do you give to somebody and being posted so everybody can see? And so so some of my Facebook friends were going in hard on the guy. They just going back and forth, said that's not the kind of person she is. And people can't do something nice. Somebody's always trying to judge what somebody does. And they were going back and forth, had this big old, this whole thread of arguing going back and forth of on about why would you post yourself doing something good. So when I first read it, my my first thought was, Godly, I didn't even mean it like that. I wasn't trying to show the world that I'm, oh, we good, we hip and somebody. It wasn't even that type of post. And so it, my first thought was to be offended. But then when I settled down, I was reading it, everybody was the same, but the Holy Spirit said, but Yolanda, that's what my word says. My word tells you to do your arms secretly and let me reward you openly. <laughs> Y'all don't want to hear that. Because we live in a day we post everything. We want people to see how great we are. We keep a record of stuff. But the God's word says, do your alms, secret alms, A-L-M-S, or, or give money, or give handouts, or, or, or hand ups, or, or bless people, be beneficial. Uh, 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 I don't mean be, I said be philanthropic. 
you, your philanthropist, you, you, you philanthropist, you, your philanthropy, let that be done secretly and I'll reward you openly. So, so since that day, I'm like, okay, well, I'm not going to post anything like that. Not because he said, or he, he offended me, but because it took that one person to say it for, for me to be convicted by, because it was when the Holy Spirit said to me, well, Yolanda, I said to you, let your arms be done secretly and allow me to reward you openly. It's easy to get caught up doing stuff, but God is judging the motives of our heart. And not only the motives, but God is judging, am I doing it according to his holy word? What does his word say? Do the book. Doing the book may not always uh, be uh, uh, the thing to do. People may call you sister do good, brother, Mr. Uh, Mr. Do right. Listen, don't worry about what people say. Don't worry about people trying to judge you to saying that you're trying to be self-righteous or you're doing this or you're trying to condemn or judge somebody else. All you do is live your life to please God in such a way that God can applaud you, that God will praise you because the scripture says praise will come from God. Not many times do you see the word praise in the New Testament when God uses, um, when Paul uses the word praise in the book of Corinthians, that word praise means to applaud, it means to commend, and that is used in the context that God is going to be the one to clap for you. Stop trying to get the applause and the approval of other people. Live and obey God in such a way that God will commend you and God will praise you. And then I'm going to give you two more, and then we're going to finish this lesson today. And so then the, the other word for praise uh, in, in the New Testament is in the, in the New Testament, this Greek word, it means a thank offering. Revelation 19 and verse 5. Anesis, A-I-N-E-S-I-S, -E -S -S, anesis, and it means a thank offering. So this word praise in Revelation means a thank offering. That we don't just give God our tithe and offering, but we also give God a thank offering. Give him something more. God has done something special, something he didn't have to do. He doesn't have to do anything, but we should give him a thank offering. Like, thank you, Lord. Some, not some, Revelation 19 and 5. I hope we're learning something. I'm not trying to excite us. I'm trying to illuminate us. And and and. And in illuminating us, I hope that will empower us to give God a better praise this year. Revelation 19 and verse 5. Revelation 19 and verse 5. Revelation 19 and verse 5 says, Revelation is only one. Revelation 19 and 5 says, Then a voice came from the throne saying, Praise our God, all you his servants, and those who fear him, both small and great. And I heard, as it were, the voice of a great multitude, as the sound of many waters, and as of the sound of mighty thunder, saying, Alleluia, for the Lord God omnipotent reigns. Well, look, verse 5 again says, Praise our God, all you his servants, and those who fear him, both small and great. Listen, that word praise in, in Revelation, that word praise means to give him a thank offering. Small and great, people small and great, people with of, of low degree, high degree, people who have uh, great means or people who have little means. That verse, that word praise in Revelation 19 and 5 in Greek means to give God a thank offering. A thank offering, either with your lips or with your hands, is to, is to give God thanks. So many things we have been given by God, everything really. But how can we not give him a thank, thanks praise? Lord, just thank you. Not for something new. Let's thank you for what you've already done. Thank you, Lord, that you've kept us through this pandemic. Thank you that you've provided for us through this pandemic. Thank you that you've kept us, you know, uh, as well as you have during these devastating times with social injustice and social unrest and these insurrectionists insurrection, insurrection and these Come on, these good old boys, these, you know, I, I almost said it. But in the midst of all of the evil that is happening in our world and close to us and around us, God is keeping us. Can't we thank God for that? I, I, I'm convinced that if we spend more time thanking God, we would have less time complaining to God because God has done so much more for us 
that we have to complain about. And then this final word for praise, another word for praise, back to the Hebrew is Shabbat. Shabbat in Hebrew, in uh, Daniel chapter 2. Daniel chapter 2, this word praise in Daniel chapter 2, it won't mean to use your hands, it won't mean celebration, it won't mean a hymn, it won't mean to be clear or to shine, it won't mean strike the hands or to play instruments, it won't mean to applaud, it won't mean to commend. This word in Daniel chapter 2 is going to mean to adulate, to adore, to adore him. Come, come let us adore him. Kneel down before him. I'm trying to find Daniel, y'all. It's one of those. Ezekiel Daniel. Who found it? If you found it, read. <laughs> I miss saying that in class. Oh, I miss our class so much. Daniel chapter 2. Read, Lorraine. Read, Sister Shevin. Read. Read, Sister Moss. Read, Siobhan. Read. Daniel chapter 2, verse 23. I thank you and praise you, O God of my fathers. You have given me wisdom and might and have now made known to me what we ask of you. For you have made known to us the king's demand. So remember David was uh, asked the Lord to reveal a dream. God revealed his dream to David, right? Not to David, to Daniel. And so Daniel saying, I thank you and praise you, O God of my fathers. He said, I thank you and I adore you. He said, I adore you. That's, that praise there means I adore you. What he's saying is, Lord, there's, there's nobody like you. You're just, you're special. You're one of a kind. Come on, y'all. He's, he's saying, I love you and I respect you. That's what the word adore means, to love and respect. He's saying, I worship you. That's what the word adore means, I worship you. So praise, there are many different words for the word praise in the Hebrew and the Greek. And I have not said them all. I just, I, I chose the ones that I believe we're going to use over these next few weeks uh, more often. Um, and so praise, if we're going to give God a better praise this year, we can give God a better praise by having a better understanding of the term praise itself. Praise does not mean just to sing. Because we think praise, we have relegated praise to mean just to sing to God. No, praise doesn't mean just to sing. It means a hymn. It means to offer words to God. It means to confess. It means to extend the hands. It means to lift the hands. It means to applaud. It means to thank offering. It means to adore. It means to celebrate, to thank God for harvest. So many words for this word praise. Barak is one that I didn't say. Barak means to bow down. So there are so many different terms that we have for this term praise in the Hebrew and the Greek. That if we if we are intentional about being um, uh, better vessels of praise to our God, then certainly we will see that our life will be much more richer um, and, and, and lighter. The more we praise God, the more he lifts our burdens. So when you're feeling down and when you're feeling bad, the way you, the way you lift your spirit is to praise God, is to acknowledge him, is to acknowledge him, lift, ask him to lift you. And you do that by praising him, lifting him up. You cannot lift him up and he not lift you up. As you lift him, he's lifting you. And so, and so next week, we're going to continue this lesson. We're going to talk about the worship of God, the wonders of God, and the wisdom of God. And how when we look at his wonders and his works and his wisdom, those are more reasons for which we can praise him. God really is worthy of our praise not just singing on the Sabbath day, not just singing in the sanctuary. I feel sad for seniors or for saints who can only sing and praise God in the sanctuary. Come on, y'all. It's not, even, even when you're sad, when there's no song, you can still offer God praise because praise is not just singing. You can still say, Lord, thank you. This hurts, but thank you, Lord. This is painful, but thank you, Lord. That's offering a praise to God, a praise of thanks. That's offering a anesis to God. I hope you learned something. If nothing more, you shouldn't have now one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine more words in your vocabulary for praise. Yada, Halil, Tahila, Halal, Toda, Zama, Epinos, and Anesis, and Shabak. And then I told you Barak. So um, um 
we're going to remember to give God praise with our being. Why? Because we were created for him, for his glory and to give him praise. That's why he created us, to give him praise. Amen. And we're going to talk about that's why the enemy hates us. It's because although he was the chief praiser, he lost his place and his position with God. And now God has given us that, that place, that position. And so every time I praise God, it makes the devil mad. The devil's mad whenever I praise God because it reminds him that he has lost his place with God. I love you. I miss you. And I pray that this lesson has helped you in some way. And if nothing more, you were reminded from the rising of the sun until the going down of the sand, our God's name is worthy to be praised. Until next week, let's not forget that this is our year of better things, better things, better praise, better ways, better sacrifice, better service. I will be a better witness at home and beyond and share with others what great things Jesus has done. It is better to put your confidence in God and not man. Father, right now, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for your word. We know that your word is true. We thank you for your word because your word enlightens us. And we pray that you have opened up the eyes of our understanding that we may know a little more plainly what it means to give you praise. We know that you're worthy. And so we want to be uh, better at praising you because you always give us your best. We love you. We thank you. Help us to retain what we've learned today so that we can use it in the days to come to give your name the glory, the honor, and the praise. We thank you. We pray this prayer by faith in your daughter's son, Jesus' name. Amen. And thank God. I pray even now that you will continue to um, meet us here at one o'clock on this virtual platform. Share with others to let other people know we still have one o'clock Bible study. It's on YouTube and it's on Facebook. Although Yolanda is not on Facebook, Marilyn Clemens is making sure that this video is on our Facebook page, the Seniors Facebook page, and it's on YouTube. And so please be a part of this weekly Bible study. Be a part of the Bible study at the church at 730. Uh, and then we have some small group Bible studies that are going to happen the whole month of March. And so we're going to be inundated with the word because the word makes us better. Remember to give your tithe, your offer to continue to uh, uh, support and be obedient to uh, God's word to fund the kingdom, to take care of spiritual things. Amen. I love you. Continue to pray for one another. And if you need me, you know how to reach me. 713-358-2724. If you have the cell number, use it. We're praying for you. We're praying for you. We're praying for you. God bless you. See you next week. Your God is willing. <laughs>